Abnormal Load Engineering, or ALE, was taken over by Mammut in 2020. This model is the ALE MB Actros 8x8 with a ballast box and a 14 axle Scheuerle set. It's from the Mammut store, so it has a Mammut model number. And if we turn it over and look at the back, we see that it's made by WSI Models. And it's Mammut model number 410284. Let's put the box on the Cranes Etc. Weighbridge and it's £3.11 ounces or 1.67 kilos. To get at the insides, we need to slide off the outer cover and then we see the model parts nicely protected with a plastic former on top. But before you can remove the top, you have to undo lots of fiddly bits of tape. But don't worry, you don't have to watch that being done. The tape's removed and the top is taken off. And as you can see, the parts are held within dense foam rubber. So you do have to be a little bit careful about how you lift the models out, making sure you don't break anything. And there are lots of parts to get out of the box. There is a Mammut collector card showing that 600 models have been made. To start the assembly, there's a pin we can put in the hitch at the front of the tractor. I'm not sure it does anything, but it's there for completeness. There's a towing hitch at the back and there's a funnel to insert, but it's a tight fit because of paint thicknesses. And we need to drift it into place with a screwdriver to get the holes to line up. We're doing that because there's also a pin to insert. And again, it's a tight fit due to paint thicknesses. At this stage, we'll assemble the tractor with a ballast box. And these are used to provide weight on the rear axles and improve traction when the tractor is pulling something heavy. Now we'll move on to joining up the Scheuerle units. And they have a nice positive connection system. Once you've got it all lined up, you then insert the sliding bolt. And that locks the two trailer units together. That's the two four axle units, so we'll add on the six axle unit. And on the six axle unit, the axle supports point to the front, and on the four axles, these point to the back. We fitted the tractor with a ballast box, so we need to fit a drawbar at the front of the trailer. In the first instance, this is a simple plug-in connection, and initially at least, it's quite firmly fitting. These trailers are highly engineered because you can fit a bar connection between the drawbar and the axle steering. And that mechanical linkage means when the drawbar moves, the axles steer. But no instructions are included to show you how to do this, and it is very fiddly to install. Also fiddly are the arrangements at the rear of the trailer, and these extension pieces should be fitted to allow the light clusters to be added on top. But again, it's very fiddly to install, so we'll just install the light clusters on their own. That's the back, we've done the front, so now we need to do the top. There are metal plates which cover the steering mechanisms, and they also produce a nice flat load deck. They just drop into place and they fit well. Now we'll connect the trailer to the tractor, but again, probably because of paint thicknesses, the drawbar doesn't fit into the funnel. So to get around that, we'll just take the funnel off and make the connection. Next we have a couple more bits of detail to add, and one is a control console. It's plastic and clips into place. And there's also a plastic generator unit. With all that done, we've now completed the model in this drawbar configuration. As we've got all the parts out of the box, let's see how much the model weighs. And it's two pounds, seven ounces, or 1.1 kilograms. The underside of the Actros is interesting because all of the axles are driven, and that's because this is the particularly heavy haulage version of the Mercedes-Benz Actros. The detailing is of a high standard with different tyres front and rear. There are beacon lights on the roof and ALE heavy lift graphics, and the inside of the cab looks good through the windscreen. The front of the Actros also looks great with its graphics and chevrons. There are more interesting ALE decorations on the side of the cab, and as you can see, this type of tractor sits high on the wheels. Behind the cab on this side, there's a nice chrome exhaust, and then there's the equipment tower. Further back is a cabinet, and the ballast box is a metal part. 
The wheel arches are stiff plastic. There are more graphics on the back of the ballast box. And the detailing of the lights on the tractor is good. There's a non-functional winch on the ballast box and metal spacers. And the equipment tower is a detailed part with lights on top and a radiator grill and a large tank at the bottom. Moving on to the trailer units, and they are of identical construction. They have a high metal content and there are nice tyres on the wheels. The drawbar is a detailed metal part and it includes working springs. And the control console is highly detailed with individual levers. The generator set is also a good looking part. The trailer deck has nicely textured parts. There's a yellow stripe down the deck edges and nice looking wheels. At the back, the light clusters also look good. An option included with the set is a gooseneck and it's a very detailed part. It's got ALE graphics on the sideboard and there are plenty of hoses at the back. To begin, the rear axles of the Actros spin freely and there is linked steering of the front two axles and they have a moderate range of movement. Out on the Cranes Etc Superhighway and the Actros rolls very smoothly. But let's set the steering and see what kind of angle we can achieve. And I suppose it will be described as blunt rather than sharp. The big cab tilts but it won't stay tilted. Although if you do hold it open and look at the engine underneath it's very detailed and includes Mercedes-Benz graphics. The trailer units all have independent sprung suspension on the axles and there is proportional steering implemented. Although it's shallower and stiffer on the six axle unit. Right side up and the trailer units achieve good steering. And if we give them the springiness test, the suspension works very well. These are complex pieces of modeling and it is interesting to see the steering mechanism working. Overall, configured with a drawbar, the model is quite long, so let's do a dim check. And it's about 26 inches or 66 centimeters long. Of course, a big heavy haulage model like this needs a load. So let's give it a substantial reactor vessel. It has supports which we will carefully space out. And then the giant hand cranes can lift the vessel on. Let's try an alternative configuration, so we'll take the drawbar off and we'll attach the gooseneck. This joins on in the same way that the trailer units connect together. Once the holes are lined up underneath, there's a locking bolt which secures it. For completeness, the model set also includes supports for the gooseneck when it's not attached to a tractor. Although these don't quite touch the ground. Let's adjust them and put them into a temporary transport mode. And then we can connect the gooseneck to the tractor. It's an easy connection and clunk click does the trick. There are a couple of bits of detail to add and that is some marker boards. And these plug into the gooseneck connector. So with the gooseneck configuration set up, we can try a different load. And this time we'll add on a heavy transformer. If you don't have these kind of loads, you could just put on a couple of giant crates of pocket coffee. And what could be better than that? This is a great looking model of the 8x8 Mercedes-Benz Actros in ALE colours. When attached to the Shoyola trailer, it produces an impressive heavy hauler. And so it looks great with a suitable load on board. It is a very nice combination of high detail and functionality and overall it is excellent.